Welcome to SnoozeCast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. Find us at snoozecast.com, and if you enjoy our show, please share us with a friend. If you would like to get an email once a week with upcoming sleep stories and other news, subscribe to the newsletter at snoozecast.com. This episode is brought to you by Pleasant Drams. Tonight, we'll read a selection of recipes from the book English House Wifery by Elizabeth Moxon, published in 1764. This book describes itself as being confined to things useful, substantial, and splendid, and calculated for the preservation of health and upon the measures of frugality, being the result of 30 years' practice and experience. Let's get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep breaths. To make whipped syllabubs, take two porringers of cream and one of white wine. Grate in the skin of a lemon. Take the whites of three eggs. Sweeten it to your taste, then whip it with a whisk. Take off the froth as it rises and put it into your syllabub glasses or pots, whether you have, then they are fit to use. An orange pudding. Take two Seville oranges, the largest and cleanest you can get. Grate off the outer skin with a clean grater. Take eight eggs. Leave out two of the whites half a pound of loaf sugar, beat it very fine, put it to your eggs, and beat them for an hour. Put to them half a pound of clarified butter and four ounces of almonds blanched, and heat them with a little rose water. Put in the juice of the oranges but mind you don't put in the pippins, and mix together. Bake it with a thin paste over the bottom of the dish. It must be baked in a slow oven. To make an herb pudding. Take a good quantity of spinach and parsley a little sorrel, and mild thyme. Put to them a handful of great oatmeal creed. Shred them together till they be very small. Put to them a pound of currants, well washed and cleaned. Four eggs well beaten in a gill of good cream. If you would have it sweet, Put in a quarter of a pound of sugar, a little nutmeg, a little salt, and a handful of grated bread. Then meal your cloth and tie it closed before you put it in to boil. To make a bread pudding, take three gills of milk when boiled Take a penny loaf sliced thin. Cut off the outer crust. Put on the boiling milk. Let it stand close covered till it be cold. And beat it very well till all the lumps be broke. Take five eggs 
beat very well. Grate in a little nutmeg. Shred some lemon peel. And a quarter of a pound of butter with as much sugar as will sweeten it. And currants as much as you please. Let them be well cleaned. So put them into your dish and bake or boil it. To make herb dumplings. Take a penny loaf, cut off the outer crust, and the rest in slices. Put to it as much hot milk as will just wet it. Take the yolks and whites of six eggs. Beat them with two spoonfuls of powdered sugar, half a nutmeg, and a little salt. So put it to your bread. Take half a pound of currants, well cleaned. Put them to your eggs. Then take a handful of the mildest herbs you can get. Gather them so equal that the taste of one be not above the other. Wash and chop them very small. Put as many of them in as will make a deep green. Don't put any parsley among them, nor any other strong herb. So mix them all together and boil them in a cloth. Make them about the bigness of middling apples. About half an hour will boil them. Put them into your dish and have a little candied orange, white wine, butter, and sugar for sauce. So serve them up. To make lemon cheesecakes. Blanch half a pound of almonds and beat them in a stone mortar very fine with a little rose water. Put in eight eggs, leaving out five of the whites. Take three quarters of a pound of sugar and three quarters of a pound of melted butter. Beat all together. Then take three lemon skins, boil tender, the rind and all. Beat them very well and mix them with the rest. Then put them into your paste. You may make a lemon pudding the same way. Only add the juice of half a lemon. Before you set them in the oven, grate over them a little fine loaf sugar. To make white gingerbread. Take a little gum dragon. Lay it in rose water all night. Then take a pound of Jordan almonds, blanched, with a little of the gum water. A pound of double refined sugar, beat and sifted. An ounce of cinnamon, beat with a little rose water. Work it into a paste and print it. Then set it in a stove to dry. To make red gingerbread. Take a quart and a gill of red wine, a gill and a half of brandy, seven or eight manchettes, according to the size of the bread is. Grate them. The crust must be dried, beat and sifted. Three pounds and a half of sugar, beat and sifted. Two ounces of cinnamon, and two ounces of ginger, beat and sifted. A pound of almonds, blanched and beat with rose water. Put the bread into the liquor by degrees, stirring it all the time. When the bread is all well mixed, take it off the fire. You must put the sugar, spices, and almonds into it. When it is cold, print it. Keep some of the spice to dust the prints with. To make a great cake. Take five pounds of fine flour. Let it be dried very well before the fire. 
and six pounds of currants, well dressed and rubbed in cloths after they are washed. Set them in a sieve before the fire. You must weigh your currants after they are cleaned. Then take three quarters of an ounce of mace, two large nutmegs beaten and mixed amongst the flour, and pound of powder sugar, and pound of citron, and a pound of candied orange. Cut your citron and orange in pretty large pieces. And a pound of almonds, cut in three or four pieces long way. Then take sixteen eggs, leaving out half of the whites. Beat your sugar and eggs for half an hour with a little salt. Take three gills of cream and three pounds and a half of butter. Melt your butter with part of the cream for fear it should be too hot. Put it in between a jack and a gill of good brandy. A quart of light yeast and the rest of the cream Mix all your liquors together about blood warm. Make a hole in the middle of your flour and put in the liquids. Cover it half an hour and let it stand to rise. Then put in your currants and mix all together. Butter your hoop, tie a paper threefold, and put it at the bottom in your hoop. Just when they are ready to set in the oven, put the cake into your hoop at three times. When you have laid a little paste at the bottom, lay in part of your sweetmeats and almonds. Then put in a little paste over them again and the rest of your sweetmeats and almonds and set it in a quick oven. Two hours will bake it. To make icing for this cake. Take two pounds of double refined sugar, beat it, and sift it through a fine sieve. Put to it a spoonful of fine starch, a pennyworth of gum arabic. Beat them all well together. Take the whites of four or five eggs. Beat them well, and put to them a spoonful of rose water or orange flower water, a spoonful of the juice of lemon. Beat them with the whites of your eggs, and put in a little to your sugar till you wet it. Then beat them for two hours whilst your cake is baking. If you make it over thin, it will run. When you lie it on your cake, you must lie it on with a knife. If you would have the icing very thick, you must add a little more sugar. Wipe off the loose currants before you put on the icing and put it into the oven to harden the icing. To make raisin wine, Take 10 gallons of water and 50 pounds of raisins. Pick out the large stalks and boil them in your water. When your water is boiled, put it into a tub. Take the raisins and chop them very small. When your water is blood warm, put in your raisins and rub them very well with your hand. When you put them into the water, let them work for ten days, stirring them twice a day. Then strain out the raisins in a sieve and put them into a clean hardened bag and squeeze it in the press to take out the liquor. So put it into your barrel. Don't let it be over full. Bung it up close and let it stand whilst it is fine. When you tap your wine, you must not tap it too near the bottom, 
for fear of the grounds. When it is drawn off, take the grounds out of the barrel and wash it out with a little of your wine. Then put your wine into the barrel again, draw your grounds through a flannel bag, and put them into the barrel to the rest. Add to it two pounds of loaf sugar, then bung it up and let it stand a week or ten days. If it be very sweet to your taste, let it stand some time longer and bottle it. To Make Birch Wine Take birch water and boil it. Clear it with whites of eggs. To every gallon of water, take two pounds and a half of fine sugar. Boil it three quarters of an hour, and when it is almost cold, put in a little yeast. Work it two or three days, then put it into a barrel, and to every five gallons, put in a quart of brandy and half a pound of stoned raisins. Before you put up your wine, burn a brimstone match in the barrel. To make orange brandy. Take a quart of brandy, the peels of eight oranges, thin paired. Keep them in the brandy 48 hours in a closed pitcher. Then take three pints of water, put into it three quarters of a pound of loaf sugar, boil it till half be consumed. Let it stand till cold, then mix it with the brandy. To make cowslip wine, take 10 gallons of water. When it is almost at boiling, add to it 21 pounds of fine powdered sugar. Let it boil half an hour and skim it very clean. When it is boiled, put it in a tub. Let it stand till you think it cold to set on the yeast. Take a porringer of new yeast off the fat and put to it a few cowslips. When you put on the yeast, put in a few every time it is stirred till all the cowslips be in, which must be six pecks, and let it work three or four days Add to it six lemons, cut off the peel, and the insides put into your barrel. Then add to it a pint of brandy. When you think it has done working, close up your vessel, let it stand a month, and then bottle it. You may let your cowslips lie a week or ten days to dry before you make your wine, for it makes it much finer. You may put in a pint of white wine that is good instead of the brandy. To make orange shrub. Take Seville oranges when they are fully ripe. To three dozen of oranges, put half a dozen of large lemons. Pare them very thin. The thinner, the better. Squeeze the lemons and oranges together. Strain the juice through a sieve. To a quart of the juice, put a pound and a quarter of loaf sugar. About three dozen of oranges, if they be good, will make a quart of juice. To every quart of juice, put a gallon of brandy. Put it into a little barrel with an open bung, 
with all the chippings of your oranges and bung it up close. When it is fine, bottle it. This is a pleasant dram and ready for punch all the year. To make an angelica cake. Take the stalks of angelica, boil and green them very well. Put to every pound of pulp a pound of loaf sugar beaten very well. And when you think it is beaten enough, lay them in what fashion you please on glasses, and as they candy, turn them. To make king cakes, take a pound of flour, three quarters of a pound of butter, half a pound of sugar, and half a pound of currants, well cleaned. Rub your butter into your flour and put in as many yolks of eggs as will lie them. Then put in your sugar, currants, and some mace. Shred in as much as will give them a taste. So make them up in little round cakes and butter the papers you lie them on. To make macaroons. Take a pound of blanched almonds and beat them. Put some rose water in while beating. They must not be beaten too small. Mix them with the whites of five eggs, a pound of sugar finely beaten and sifted, and a handful of flour. Mix all these very well together. Lay them on wafers and bake them in a very temperate oven. It must not be so hot as for manchette. Then they are fit for use. To make raspberry cream. Take raspberries, bruise them, put them in a pan on a quick fire whilst the juice be dried up. Then take the same weight of sugar as you have raspberries and set them on a slow fire. Let them boil whilst they are pretty stiff. Make them into cakes and dry them near the fire or in the sun. To make queen cakes. Take a pound of London flour dried well before the fire, nine eggs, a pound of loaf sugar beaten and sifted. Put one half to your eggs and the other to your butter. Take a pound of butter and melt it without water. Put it into a stone bowl. When it is almost cold, put in your sugar and a spoonful or two of rose water. Beat it very quick for half an hour till it be as white as cream. Beat the eggs and sugar as long and very quick whilst they be white. When they are well beat, mix them all together. Then, Take half a pound of currants, cleaned well, and a little shred of mace, so you may fill one part of your tins before you put in your currants. You may put a quarter of a pound of almonds shredded, if you please, into them that is without currants. You may ice them, if you please, but do not let the icing be thicker than you may lie on with a little brush. To make white lemon cream. Take a gill of spring water and a pound of fine sugar. Set it over a fire 
till the sugar and water be dissolved. Then put the juice of four good lemons to your sugar and water, the whites of four eggs well beat. Set it on the fire again and keep it stirring one way till it just simmers and does not boil. Strain it through a fine cloth, then put it on the fire again, adding to it a spoonful of orange flower water. Stir it till it thickens on a slow fire, then strain into basins or glasses for your use. Do not let it boil. If you do, it will curdle. To make cream curds, take a gallon of water, put to it a quart of new milk, a little salt, a pint of sweet cream, and eight eggs, leaving out half the whites, and strain. Beat them very well. Put to them a pint of sour cream. Mix them very well together, and when your pan is just at boiling, but is not boiled, put in the sour cream and your eggs. Stir it about and keep it from settling to the bottom. Let it stand whilst it begins to rise up. Then have a little fair water. And as they rise, keep putting it in whilst they be well risen. Then take them off the fire. Let them stand a little to satin. Have ready a sieve with a clean cloth over it. And take up the curds with a ladle or egg slicer, whether you have. You must always make them the night before you use them. This quantity will make a large dish if your cream be good. If you think your curds be too thick, mix through them two or three spoonfuls of good cream. Lie them upon a china dish in lumps, so serve them up. To make apple cream. Take half a dozen large apples, coslings or any other apples that will be soft, and coddle them. When they are cold, take out the pulp. Then take the whites of four or five eggs, leaving out the strains. Three quarters of a pound of double refined sugar, beat and sifted. A spoonful or two of rose water and grate in a little lemon peel. So beat all together for an hour whilst it be white, then lay it on a china dish to serve it up. To fry cream to eat hot. Take a pint of cream and boil it three spoonfuls of London flour mixed with a little milk. Put in three eggs and beat them very well with the flour, a little salt, a spoonful or two of fine powdered sugar. Mix them very well. Then put your cream to them on the fire and boil it. Then beat two eggs more very well. And when you take your pan off the fire, stir them in and pour them into a large pewter dish about half an inch thick. When it is quite cold, cut it out in square bits 
and fry it in butter. A light brown. As you fry them, set them before the fire to keep hot and crisp. So dish them up with a little white wine, butter, and sugar for your sauce in a china cup. Set it in the midst and grate over some loaf sugar. To make rice or almond cream. Take two quarts of cream, boil it with what seasoning you please, then take it from the fire and sweeten it. Pick out the seasoning and divide it into two parts. Take a quarter of a pound of blanched almonds well beat with orange flower water. Set that on the fire and put to it the yolks of four eggs well beat and strained. Keep it stirring all the time it is on the fire. When it rises to boil, take it off, stir it a little, then put it into your basin. The other half set on the fire and thicken it with flour of rice. When you take it off, put to it the juice of a lemon orange flower water or sack and stir it till it be cold then serve it up